Welcome back, my name is Greg Martin. We're gonna be talking about risk, rate, and odds. These are concepts and terms that we use in public health and epidemiology. People often get them confused. By the end of this video, I promise you, you're gonna understand them completely. So let's get into it, Oya Shaka. So let's start by talking about risk. Risk really is what you think it is, right? Risk is the chances of a person getting sick or getting some other health outcome that you're interested in within a certain period of time. To calculate risk, we really just need three things. Firstly, we need a defined population that we consider to be at risk, right? So we need that group of people. Secondly, we need a defined period of time during which we consider them to be at risk. And thirdly, we need to count up the number of new incidents of this disease or this health state that we're interested in that happens during that period of time. Now, if you've watched my video on incidence and prevalence, you'll notice that the way I've described risk is very similar, if not exactly the same, as the way I would have described incidence. If we have 10 people and we look at them over a period of one year and three of them develop cancer within that year, we would have said the risk of getting cancer is three over 10, which is 30%. Now let's talk about rate. Rate is a very similar concept to risk, but there's a small difference. In the case of rate, we divide the number of new cases by something we call the person time. And I'm gonna explain what that means in just a second. To explain this, I'm gonna use an example. Let's imagine, for example, that we had a study that we were doing and we were following 10 people over 10 years, right? And we wanted to count the number of them that got cancer or some other disease during that period of time. During the study, however, not everybody would stay in the study all the way to the end. Some people might drop out of the study and other people may, may die even during the study. And so not everybody in the study contributes a full 10 years in terms of the period of time within which they might get sick. And so what we could do, and in fact this is what we do, is we take the time contribution of each individual that they spent in the study, and we add them all together, and we get a cumulative person time of the entire study, and we use that as the denominator. In other words, the three or four people that got cancer, whatever disease at the beginning, that's the numerator. We divide that by the cumulative person time as the denominator, and we get the rate. Now let's talk about odds. Odds is slightly less intuitive. Odds are the number of events divided by the number of non-events, or the probability of something happening divided by the probability of it not happening. If the odds of an event are more than one, then it is more likely to happen than not. If they're less than one, in other words, between zero and one, then they're less likely to happen than not. And if they're exactly one, then it's as likely to happen as it is not to happen. To understand the difference between odds and risk, I'm going to use an example. And just so that you know, this channel is sponsored by Nested Knowledge. That's a platform that supports systematic literature review and meta-analysis. They're absolutely amazing. Check out the link in the description below. And with that, on with the lesson. Imagine that you've gone to the movies, right? And there's 100 people in the cinema. One person sneezes. The risk of sneezing in that time period is one over 100, right? The number of people that had the health outcome, in this case sneezing, over the number of people at risk at the beginning, which is 100, so it's one over 100, that's the risk of sneezing. The odds of sneezing is slightly different, right? Now it's one, that's the numerator, the number of people that had this health outcome, divided by the number of people who didn't have the health outcome. Not the number of people at risk at the beginning, but the number of people who didn't have that outcome. In this case, it's 99, okay, because 99 people didn't sneeze. So you might say to yourself, look, the risk of sneezing and the odds of sneezing in that movie are very, very similar. And that's true. When you're talking about risk and odds at low incidence, they are, they are very similar, almost indistinguishable. Where this becomes, it becomes more apparent, the difference between them is when the incidence is higher. So let's change the scenario slightly. Let's imagine that 55 people in this movie sneezed during the time of the film, right? Now, the risk of sneezing is 55 over 100. So 55, the number of people who sneezed, divided by 100, the number of people at risk of sneezing at the beginning of the movie. So 55%. The odds of sneezing, however, are 55 over 45, right? 55, the number of people who sneezed. 45, the number of people who didn't sneeze, right? And that's 1.2. Now, we said about odds, if the odds are more than one, then it's more likely that you sneeze than you didn't. And that's true in this case, the odds are 1.2. So it's for any person going to that cinema for that period of time, it's more likely that they would have sneezed than they wouldn't have. Now, stay and watch another video. The next video that I want you to watch is a video that's gonna be on understanding the difference between a case control and a cohort study. Thanks for tuning into the Global Health YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you haven't before. Hit the bell notification so you get notification of future videos. I really enjoy feedback, so put comments in the comment section below. Stay well, don't do drugs, always do your best. Speak to you soon. Bye.